Would you guys today would take a look at the most powerful MIDI PC you should buy is the B-Link SER6 Pro. This has a Ryzen 7 6800H and also a Radeon 680M GPU in here. This is exactly what you're going to get inside the box if you purchase it. You're going to get your user manual. This is going to tell you all about how to set it up and what it can actually do and all the settings and things like that and any future upgrades that you want to do to your actual mini PC. Next up, we've got some screws here. This is for the hard drive and also the mounting bracket, which is this one here. So you can wall mount it. We also have a couple of HDMI cables. This one is a very short one. And we also have another HDMI cable here. You can purchase new ones if you wish. We've got a free pin plug here for the UK and uh, you can get yours whether you're in Europe or another country. You'll get a plug to suit your needs. And this is the actual adapter here. 19 volts, 6.32 amps and 120 watts. Now this little mini PC also comes with the actual PC as well and a changeable cover here. If you wish to change the top cover to another color, you can do. So let's take a look at the actual unit itself. So on the front, we have that clear CMOS. I do like the blue effect on the actual paint job they've got here. We also have two USB 3.2 Gen 2 uh, ports on here and also a USB 4 uh, port on here as well and an earphone uh, input there as well and a power button on this front end of the actual unit itself. They've done quite a lot of work, B-Link, on this particular unit and I do like the way they're going with it. They've got some nice airflow on the side and the same can be said for the other side as well. We have some airflow on that side as well. We can allow air to breathe through. On the back, we have that exhaust fan at the very top there. And on the back, we also have the LAN port, which is a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port on there, a USB 2.0 port, and another USB 3.2 Gen 2 port on here, two 4K 60 Hertz HDMI ports, and a power input for your DC input there. So that is the actual back of the unit as well. What I'm going to do is quickly uh, take this apart so you can see inside and see the components. But there's the full specs on the screen right there. So in this particular one, we have a Ryzen 7 6800H, which is 8 cores, 12 threads, 4.7 gigahertz. And that is a pretty beefy CPU. We also have 32 gigabytes of RAM in here. This is DDR5 RAM that we have in this particular unit. So you're going to be able to play GTA 5, Forza, Fortnite, and games like that at 1080p with some very good frame rates, probably over 60 FPS. If you want to see a full video on gameplay, then let me know in the comments section below. So let me just quickly remove the actual back plate here so we can actually see, uh, and we can have a look at the uh, unit itself inside. Now inside here, you're going to have this little enclosure here, which is for your SSD. You can drop an SSD in here, anything up to uh, two terabytes in here, which is going to be plenty of storage in here. And there is that fan to keep it cool in here as well. The cooling on this unit is second to none. It really is. It's a really good mini PC for good cooling as well. And B-Link have made leaps and bounds with this uh, mini PC design. And it's probably one of the best designs on the market today. And you're probably not going to find many on the market that support uh, Thunderbolt 4 uh, as well, which is very good indeed. We have good Wi-Fi on this unit. I'm just going to quickly remove this by removing the screws here to remove this cover so you can see inside here. And it has quality components in here. No cheap components in their builds. They always put uh, Crucial and Kingston and all of good uh, branded names uh, for RAM and also for the actual uh, NVMe drives in here because this does have an NVMe drive, 500 gigabytes in fact, and it can go up to two terabytes you can see crucial RAM in here. DDR5 is very expensive at the moment. And of course, you're getting this inside this build. And this is why people wonder why uh, these units are expensive, because you're getting top of the line hardware in these mini PCs. We also have Wi-Fi 6 in here and Bluetooth 5.2 as well available to us. So a pretty decent mini PC. You can remove this top plate here. It's just to use a screwdriver and just tease it up. And there'll be a fan underneath there and you can replace this top cover with one of the ones that they supply on their site as well. But it does have holes in here to allow airflow. So I'm going to do a quick Geekbench uh, benchmark here for the CPU here so you can see the actual scores and you'll know exactly what this can actually perform like because it is a very powerful mini PC. And if you're looking for one and you don't know which one to get, then this one is the one to get. 1,463 and also on the multi-core, 9,031 on the multi-core. Let's do the GPU. Uh, test here the complete test for the actual unit as well and we'll give you the full score here 29,576 
for the actual complete benchmark there as well. So let's move on to the next step, which is the specs. You can see the specs here on the screen. Just gives you some information about the board and about the components inside here so you can actually see. Now, the good thing about these mini PCs is this particular one is going to allow you to do a lot of different things like photo editing, video editing, and even gaming. And we're getting to the point with these mini PCs where 1080p gaming is possible. Forza Horizon 5 and also uh, G2A5 and games like this, it will be able to play these at 1080p and you can get between 80 and 100 FPS with these particular games. It is a pretty beefy uh, little mini PC, this. And if you're looking for something that can game, some games we will have to play at 720p, but if you want to see a dedicated video on just benchmarks and gaming for this particular thing, then let me know in the comments section below, because this is an overview of the actual product itself. So we're going to take a look at the benchmarks for the actual NVMe drive, so you get an idea of what sort of speeds to expect with the NVMe in here. It is a Kingston NVMe drive, and this is the NVMe Gen 4, so we're getting these sort of speeds, as you can see here, on a mini PC which is not too bad. So let's take a look at some other specs that we've got for this mini PC for you, just in case. So if you want to run 4K streaming, you can do. I'm just going to go to Big Buck Bunny here, 60 FPS, 4K, and we're going to run this on a true 4K monitor. And you can see here exactly how it looks here. So I'm going to put the stats for nerds up there so you can see. You might get a few drop frames at the very beginning or the start of the video, or if you ever try to drag the video across, you will get a few drop frames and then it stabilizes. So here it is right here. You can see here we've got four drop frames so far, which is pretty impressive really. And this can take up to four monitors as well. So you can have up to four monitors running on this mini PC, which is impressive in itself. So let me just quickly drag this along here and you should see a few drop frames as we drag it. So we've gone up from four to seven and it stabilizes and you don't lose any more frames. Very, very impressive indeed. So that is 4K 60 FPS on a 4K uh, 120 Hertz monitor. So pretty impressive indeed. So I'll do this jellyfish here, which is 400 Mbps. And also this is 4K and we'll do 10 bit on this one as well. And you can see silky smooth, no jerkiness whatsoever. I'll skip this in a second so you can see what it looks like, but there is no stuttering or juttering on that playback, which is very impressive for this type of format and this video because it is very, and this can be hard to play for a lot of units, but you can see it's having no issues there. A little small micro stutter there when I dragged it, but that's pretty normal. And then it caught up and then it started playing okay. So that is very impressive. So let's go ahead and do the 3D Mark benchmarks here. And I'll do the quick time spy here, 2,740 for that score. And I'll quickly go down and do uh, the night raid here for you so you can see that this is on the gpu and you can then get the gpu score as well so we'll run this quickly and you can get 26,154 and this is without any tweaking it's straight out the box and you can do some fettling and tweaking if you want to improve these scores i'm pretty sure you can but they are the uh, benchmark scores for the gpu now let's have a look here at the temps here now this is idle i've been running some benchmarks here so expect to see some high attempts on uh, the maximum and that's because obviously it does uh, sort of max it out a little bit when you're running benchmarks and you're not going to be doing that type of work all the time so I'll reset this and I'll show you exactly what it's like when I run CPU Z benchmark which is stressing the CPU out to the maximum and the temps are very low here indeed for a mini PC so let me go over to the benchmark here click bench and then we'll run a stress test on the CPU and you'll see if we get any drop frames or if we get any high temps. Now, the temperatures will climb immediately because we are forcing uh, a lot of stress onto that CPU. This is more than what you'll ever put it through. And you can see 83 and 84 and we're getting no thermal throttling or no drop frames, which is pretty impressive. So you can see the temperatures there. I'm not going to leave this on here for like 15 minutes and really sort of torture the thing because it is a mini PC at the end of the day, but you can see it's holding true and it's doing pretty good. It's not in the red and it's no thermal throttling or anything like that. So we're not getting any thermal issues, which is a good thing. But if you left that running for 30 minutes, of course, it's going to start getting toasty. So I wouldn't advise you do that, but it is a pretty decent uh, cooling system on this. Now, if you're looking to play some games, you I would advise you to stick with the lower end games because obviously less stress to the GPU and CPU and uh, it will handle these games all day long 
at retro games or anything like that, it'll play these. Now, it can play 1080p game and 720p games. I haven't added any of those in this video. You can check YouTube out. There's plenty of them out there uh, that have done uh, 1080p and 720p gameplay, and they show you good frame rates. But I want to be a bit more in-depth than that and show you some of the temps and some of the realistic results that you get from doing that type of thing with this little mini PC rather than just showing you it working because it's going to tax the system, no doubt, when you start playing 1080p gaming on a system like this. And I want to really check the thermals and things like that. And I'll make that as a separate video. Now, again, as I've said, if you are purchasing a mini PC, you know, retro games like these will be able to play this at 60 FPS, no problem at all, or even higher. And we've got the upscaling here done to about three times and you can up the resolution as well and you can get really good gameplay with these sort of games. So these sort of games are no problem at all. So if you're looking for something to do a bit of Photoshop or a bit of uh, video editing or even uh, play some gaming, you can do that as well with this little mini PC. And for these people that keep asking silly questions like, is this going to replace a gaming computer? No, it's not. It's not going to be able to replace a standalone graphics card in a gaming PC and uh, replace that it won't this is on board graphics at the end of the day yes it can play games at 1080p and 720p and you can get over 60 fps with those games so you can have an enjoyable experience but it's not going to replace your gaming uh, pc as such anyway that is going to be about it for this video if you're looking for something to play all your movies it can handle all that as well so my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk hope you enjoyed this video I'll leave some links in the video description if you're interested. Let me know in the comments section what you think of this uh, mini PC and what you want to see done with it. And you want to see some other tests, let me know down there and I'll be happy to make those videos for you. Have a lovely weekend and hopefully I'll catch you on the Discord server for a chat or I'll see you in the very next video. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.